Cheers. Cheers. Couple of things we're testing today. One, we're testing the windsock on the road. The road wireless something microphone. I'm not gonna pull it out of there because <laughs> I don't remember what it's called. But and then um, I built a a cool branded Verdant Ride branded microphone thing because everyone complained about my sound. And my rule is, if you criticize the show, I will read it, and if it is legit, I'll deal with it. So I'm dealing with it. This is how I'm dealing with it. I'm hoping that this is dealing with it enough. If not, I'm going to have to keep engineering a new solution. But here we go. All right, Laura. Yes. You have now tested the Camber Pro 160 and the 150 Surf and the 200 Surf on both the uh, Lift 3 Pro and the Lift 2 Sport. Let's talk about it. Okay. <laughs> what do you want to know? <laughs> what were you able to ride? What were you able to successfully get up and plane out on? Uh, the the five O board, the white board, every time without a shoe. I mean, maybe some issue. I was able to get planed out. The blackboard with the two hundred, but not anything smaller than the two hundred. I have to make one adjustment to our setup. Okay, guys. We're going to talk about this. This is, this is, this is, I, not only did I make this microphone, but when you're doing interviews with people, like you're at an event and you're like, Hey, I'm, I'm from Verdant Ride and I'm doing a thing. Well, I thought it'd be really smart for me. They'll go, what's your channel? So I printed up all these little like business cards. These, uh, these things so you can give it to them. But I noticed they make a click. I, and I made a pocket inside of here. <laughs> They're, you move the mic back they're making a clicky noise, so I'm gonna have to re-engineer. I'm gonna have to put a clamp on them so yeah, they all they all stay. But that that's I'll put 3D files for this so people can make their own. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Now, okay. uh, now it's moving silently. Okay. Okay. Let's talk. So the 200 is what you normally surf. You got up on both the boards yeah. of that, no problem. Yes, normally I use the 200, and I was able to get up on both the. 4-2 and the 5-0 Series 2 board, the white board. And you preferred the uh, Pro, the, th the Pro, the smaller board with the 200 and the 150. No, on the, for the 200 for sure, you preferred the smaller board. So I felt like that the Sport and the white, can we just call them the white and the black board okay. and people will know? The white, for everyone, is the sport, the bigger board, and the black is the pro, the smaller board. Okay, so the white board with the 150 and the black board with the 200 are very similar. Like, they, I, to me, I felt like they had similar um, maneuverability, like cornering and stuff. Um, I think that the 5.0 board with the 150 was much easier for me to get up on than the than the than the blackboard with the 200 and once you're up and riding which did you prefer i felt like those two were interchangeable i felt like they were very okay similar. you told me when you're up and riding that the blackboard the smaller board was more nimble yeah this morning though i was riding the whiteboard with the 150 and i felt like that was nimble so like I think they're comparable. Like like I'm gonna be happy on the the whiteboard if there's lots of people here, and if there's not, we can pull up the blackboard with the 200. Will you be happier? And I'll be happy as well. I'll be both of those will make me happy. They'll okay. both be fine. Okay, let's talk about the Camber Pro 160, which is probably too small of a camber for your body weight. You should probably be on the 170 or maybe even the. Oh, are there bigger? There's bigger cambers. This is you are on the smallest camber that there there is. The the okay. one sixty. So with a bigger camber, is it going to give it more lift, easier? It would be. It would like the two hundred is easier to fly than the one fifty. Okay. Same idea. Okay. So then probably because for me the camber you you have a one sixty camber, the one sixty camber like. I had to give it a lot of power and speed to get it to lift or like be really far back on the board, yep. farther than normal. Just, just so you know, when you said I have to give it a lot of speed, I will, 
I will say from my writing it, it feels like it has a ton of drag, but it also produces a lot of lift. I thought that I was going really slow on it, but when I looked at my watch, it showed me that I was actually going fast, like faster. So that drag makes it feel slow, but it's not. And what, what I've mostly found is this. When I'm on like the 100 surf, if I, you know, twitch my eye muscle a little bit, that board will tilt. <laughs> like any little thing I do up top will force the board to tilt. So if I didn't, even if, even if I didn't mean to, it will bank. It's like a sports car. It's, it's, or a race ski, pair of yes. skis. I was banking on the water. Like I was carving on the water, sort of like you would with a wakeboard. That's on, and that's what on the surf. When I ride the camber, on the other hand, it will bank. But when I put my weight down on it, it's almost like the board goes, are you sure you want to do that? It like pushes against me and I have to really set my weight into the camber to like make it sink and then it will do its carve as I would expect and then to tilt back I have to push my weight a lot like twice as much I have to really mean it to turn it it will not turn if I accidentally twitched a little bit it's it's very stable in that way but it, that makes it, it stiff more, I felt like it was more squirrely funny yeah but again, like you said, um, I have 50 pounds on you, which matters. It matters like my husband and I, when we go snowboarding, he hates my snowboard because he's 50 pounds lighter. But for me, that snowboard, I totally have full control. So I, I would, sure, I guess I'd then be curious to try a camber that is larger because the, the smaller one was way squirrelier than the surf's. We'll check in with, um, with Beth at Zen Water Sports and see if she has some larger cambers to try. Because, you know, really, I, I, think, I think that the thing is, is um, board size is board size. I like a smaller board because I always want the most nimble ride. There is, there is too small of a wing for me that doesn't do what I want. It, it doesn't carve enough, right? Yeah. I don't just want to go fast and straight. I want to carve. My perfect ride right now is the 100 surf front and the 36 glide rear. That gives me the perfect amount of stability and speed and agility that I, I want. And I can ride other boards, but I won't, I'm not in my perfect zone quite as much. I, and I also want the smallest board because it's the lightest, most nimble. Sure. There are reasons to own larger boards. It's easier to get up on. Once you master Getting out of the water, I don't spend any time on the surface, so I don't, I don't care about yeah. surface carving. So um, I just want all my time to be foiling, on foil, and flying. Right. We haven't, I don't think we've found your perfect ride yet. I would agree with that. Like, I feel like I haven't, I haven't had, like, the perfect setup. I don't know what it might be yet. I don't know. And you do not like the fiberglass boards, correct? You tried a bunch when we were in Puerto oh my Rico? God, they're like riding minivans. They're so terrible. They're heavy. They're, I mean, the ones we were riding were larger as well than even your 5.0. Like, your 5.0 is the Series 2. And so while it's technically longer than the middle size of the Series 3 and 4, it's skinnier. So, like... It feels sportier than the than the newer the the, the fiberglass boards in the generation three felt wide. Yeah. It felt like they're I could just walk around on the thing. Yeah, they're they're huge and wide, and they're also heavy. So they, I mean, they're great for training. That's like for a trainer, that's great. For a person who wants to own one, um, they're you know they're boring. They're like minivans versus sports cars. And you feel like you deserve to be on a sports car. Yeah, I would rather, you know, we come from wakeboarding. So, yeah, I would rather be on something that is sportier. I just feel like I haven't yet found the thing that, like, sticks, you know, and, like, carves and holds the edge. I feel like sometimes when I get that edge, it's a little squirrely. And maybe for you it is a Camber Pro that's larger than what I currently own. Sure. 
you don't feel like it's any the what did you the 150 what did you think of the 150 yeah the 150 surf with the whiteboard i felt like was was totally fine it is way more maneuverable than the 200 on the whiteboard for is sure it, is it stable enough for you maybe like the 200 feels super stable but it definitely can't carve as hard so it could just be that i just need more practice you know with the 150 on the whiteboard there is that too. I do have more <laughs> practice hours than anyone yeah, else. Right? I've been surfing now for three, this is my third summer surfing. And today, uh, something kind of amazing happened. Finally, one of my neighbors bought a e-foil on their own and they bought it from uh, Beth at Zen Water Sports. And uh, one day I was out here, I was marking stumps before a big party I was about to have and, and uh, I was like, I don't want anybody crashing stumps. I was out there on a stand-up paddleboard, and I saw two other e-foilers on the water. I'm like, oh. I, I yelled to you guys. I'm like, e-foilers. And uh, I raced back in. I grabbed my e-foil, and I raced out there. And sure enough, there was Beth from Zen Water Sports giving a lesson to, to two guys who had moved in on her lake. And, um, and uh, they loved it so much, they immediately ordered a board. Yes. And he just got his board today. And he got the uh, he got a F series, the fiberglass series, and he got the jet prop, the jet sure. thing, which I've tried, albeit on way too big of a board with way too big of foils for me to actually know if it's any good. But I will say this: the propulsion was powerful enough, and it was very uh, consistent. I think for newbies, not only is it safer because you can't cut your toes off with it. But it's also a very consistent thrust coming out of there. Okay. Uh, I, I'm looking forward for you to try it to see what you think of it. Like You're still in the market for a board. You're not sure what you want yet, and you're not going to buy one until you find what you want. Right. I don't know what I would want, yeah. Um, and, yeah, I think later this summer we'll get to try that jet propulsion at one of those events. Um, what we know you want is a taller mast. Oh, for sure. Always by the tallest mass. They have made a very, I think, an affordable setup. With their fiberglass boards and their aluminum mast, it's less than $9,000, and you're getting a quality, like high-quality yeah. ride, right? It is not their highest performance ride. It's not their lightest ride. But, you know, most people aren't, to, if you're starting out in this sport, you don't need that. What you need is a company who, if anything goes wrong, will be on it, will fix it, will solve it. You need to know that if you're going to make this investment, if there's a battery problem, if there's a motor problem, if there's a hinge, pro if there's any problem, they are going to solve it, and they're going to solve it fast. I've asked all the other brands to let me review their rides. I've offered to even buy other rides, and I can't even get them to, if I can't get them to respond to me on a sales, marketing, and review call, Criminy, you think they're going to get back to me on a customer response call? Oh, I, do, I would not feel good about that. Whereas, like, with Lyft, I'm like, I want to try a thing. And Beth calls me up a few days later. Here, you want to try a thing? Yep, thing, thing's on its way. Here's the thing to try. What did you think of the thing you tried? And most of the time, I'm like, it was crap. <laughs> and they still keep letting me try stuff, so. Well, and you are still... You're seeing a similar battery usage out of the new batteries. Yep, we need to talk about that. <laughs> uh, I'm not finished with my testing, but it would, okay. it would appear to me is that, once again, Lyft's claims on batteries, including the new Gen 4 battery, may be, at least in my situation, completely bunk. I, I, some, I, sometimes I notice, I'm like, oh, it goes about 20 minutes longer for me. Which I, 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 I predicted that it would last 45 minutes for me. And it lasted, yeah, close to like 47 to dead. To okay. dead. Right. Which I never ride a battery to dead. Yeah. Why would I ever do that? Like, riding a battery to dead is like, is like, oh, I love idling in on my belly. Why would I ever? I ride a battery to like 20%. And then I'm like, yep, that gives me plenty of time to get past. Yeah, I want to be yeah. stand I don't Yeah. I know that Beth loves sitting on her board and there are lots of people that like like riding their board kneeling and stuff. I don't. 
If I'm not on my feet, I'm not surfing. I don't know. I don't want to do that at all. But uh, I, it, it may turn, I don't know. I have more testing to do and I have to run the spreadsheet and I got to really find out what I'm after. Another thing is like, there are days where I, I take it easy because like my knee's a little stiff from the weekend. And those are the days where it seems like I get the least battery time. And I don't understand because I do less miles and I go less fast and I'm not turning as much. And you'd think that would be the days. And those are the days that seem to, I don't know. It's, it's a mystery how this is all working. <laughs> But what's your take on it? What's your take on it? Today, you and I ended at the exact, we were 30% at the same time. We, we didn't. You were out there for, a, well, no, you came in. I feel like we got about the same amount of time out there. Um, and you're on the new battery. And, and I do twice the miles you do every yeah. time. I'm sure, yeah, because you're going faster than I am. So maybe it's not, not about minutes. Maybe it's about distance. It's about miles. Yeah, okay. I mean, like, and I do carve a lot. I need to make sure that my app is recording carving, and I don't know that the water speed does that, but, like, every time I carve, you have to realize I'm essentially putting on the brakes. I am creating significant drag. I'm changing direction at a very rapid... It's like skiing. How do you slow yourself down skiing? You carve. You turn. I am basically putting the brakes every four seconds as I come into a carve. So let's, let's be real. I am not running these boards for maximum mileage no. or time. No. But that's what I enjoy. So like what I want is a battery that's going to give me the most amount of time. And I can ride. I could ride for an hour and a half without stopping. Right. Yeah. And you could ride for seven, eight minutes. <laughs> I like to take little breaks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm going in. It's been eight minutes. I'm tired. I'm going in. I was really riding hard out there. You just got off your uh, foil like a minute ago. <laughs> I did right around my belly. Come on, Boba. Come on, Boba. Boba, hop up. Come on, Boba. Come on, Boba. Come on. Come on. Hop up. Hop up. Come on. Come on. Hop up. You can do this. Hop up. Hop up. You can do it, buddy. I, what, is he tired today? <laughs> okay, Boba, what did you think of uh, e-foiling? <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't squeak. I'm not interested in it. Right. If, I don't, if I punch it with my nose, it doesn't yeah. squeak. Okay, this has been Verdant Ride with testing a microphone, multiple blades, and uh, not really the battery, but yeah, we, we're gonna, probably going to have to talk about this battery. Also, my, my Lift 3 is still making way too much noise. I think you would agree. Blackboard. It's the same as the Lift 2. It's not. Better. No, it's way worse. Is it? Okay. Yeah, it's about 18 decibels worse. Okay, your Lift 4 is dead silent. No one wants to ride my Lyft 3 because it is so, it's the loudest board I own and it's super loud. And I don't know if it's a problem with the speed, the box, the controller box, like it's cycling in a weird hertz or something, or if they had a bad batch of motors, but they've replaced the motor, like the whole mast and everything. And it's still way too loud and I'm going to have them solve it. It's still under warranty. I'm going to go through it. I didn't show everybody what I went through to get the mast replaced because honestly, I, I felt like if they found out how easy it was to get a brand new mast and motor, they would abuse it. Honestly, I did. And I didn't want, I don't want people to abuse this company because I want them to be great. And I just felt like that was too easy. And I was trying to work with the engineer, like, let's figure out what this sound is. Let's figure out what, when, what's going wrong. Let's make sure we replace the right pliers. And they were like, we just want to replace all your parts. We just, can we just send you a new board? I'm like, no, I want to solve this. So you send me only what I need. They're like, we just prefer to send you new stuff. Just, we'll send you new things. Like, let's just get you solved. Yeah. Like, as fast as possible. I'm like, I, I feel like a partner to this company. I don't know why. I don't own any share in them, but like, <laughs> I want them to be great. And so I was trying to work with their engineers, like, let's listen to the sound together and figure out what it is and just replace that. And yeah. they were like, nope, brand new mask, bag and everything. Yeah. New tool kit, new sticker you're never going to use, everything. Like yeah. I bought a brand new board. And I'm like, and it's still too effing loud. So what? it didn't get solved. So what you did, though, is then you had a second long mask that you put on the Series 2 board. So now I have two loud masts, but it didn't solve the problem. <laughs> they're so loud, it feels like they're breaking as you ride them. They're, there's something wrong with them. You know that. The motors shouldn't make that noise. Yeah, I got a free tall mast. A really super loud free tall mast, and I didn't want people to rip off lift. 
Like, I just, I just like, nope, I'm not airing this show. It's, their customer service is so great, but their interest in actually, like, solving the problem was so low, I didn't want to show that. So, I don't know. I, I care about how, how well they do. I want them to do well. I do. I really do. I don't want them to be abused by people. I don't want to help them be abused by people. I don't want my listeners going, oh, that's how you get a free mess. Thanks, Verdant Ride. I didn't want that. You know, like, I don't want a free mess. I want a quiet ride. If that's a dollar, one dollar piece, that, great. That's what I deserve. That's what I want. Am I wrong? Am I wrong here? Like, what? Even my reseller was like, dude, why aren't you happy with them? He's like listening to all the conversation go back and forth. I'm like, I want to find out why it's broken so they ca I can help them fix it. I want them to make great products, man. I, he's like, I don't understand. They're offering you free gear. Just take the free gear and shut up. And I'm like, I don't want free gear. I want the company to solve their loud motor problem. <laughs> well, maybe they did solve it by making the Gen 4. I don't really, I don't, like, here's the thing. I bought a Gen 3. I don't deserve a Gen 4. Right? I did. I bought a Gen 3. Right. I deserve a working Jet 3 that matches their advertising. And if they send me a Gen 4, if that's their solution, then I guess they should sell to every single person who, has a, who complains of a loud motor a Gen 4, mast and motor. If that's the solution... Because their, their manufacturing changed. I don't think it's the motor. I think it's the fucking speed box. I do. I really do. I think it's that Wait. speed box... Which they also changed for the Gen 4. They but did. The speed box is different too. I think they changed the hertz that yeah. it's sending out signals to the motor and that yeah. they figured out how to make it quieter from the yeah. speed box alone. Because your Gen 4 board is dead silent. I did wrote that yesterday and I was like, I don't know how fast I'm going. I don't even know if it's on. I don't like this. I thought I was going really slow on it too the first time I wrote it because I'd come off the Gen 3, which is like riding a yeah. fucking blender. And I was like, I'm going really slow. And then I looked at my watch and I'm like, I'm doing six miles an hour faster than normal. Yeah, it's... <laughs> it's creepy quiet. Yeah. It's amazing. And you don't feel anything in your feet. Whereas the no. Gen 3 board, I feel Hitachi magic wands. Like, just like someone like filled the battery compartment with Hitachi magic wands, turn them all on. <laughs> That's what it feels like. It's worse than that, though. Right, because it's on your feet. Ugh, it's the worst. <laughs> and they do have to fix it. They're responsible to fix it. That is true. They sold me a board supposed to be quieter my Gen 2, and it's way louder. Thoughts? <laughs> I don't have any additional thoughts. <laughs> All right, Burton Ride testing. Hopefully we can hear this. If not, then guess what? These microphones suck. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out. We will find out. <laughs> Wait. You got it? Yeah. Right. Saying it like that. No. no, other hand. Other hand. What's happening? There you That's go. the wrong hand. Around the microphone. <laughs> That's my left hand. It's all awkward. Hang loose.